Hello, I'm James Shapiro, Director of the Clinical Islet Transplant and Research Programs here at the University of Alberta. We are almost a hundred years, not quite, but almost a hundred years since Banting's great idea to treat patients with diabetes with injections of insulin. Insulin is a life-saving treatment for thousands upon thousands of patients with diabetes, but it's still far from perfect and does not provide a completely normal lifestyle nor does it provide a complete freedom and normal life. So we want to do better with diabetes treatments. Working with DRIFCAN, we are now taking four major bold steps forward to try to eliminate this disease permanently. In Edmonton, we are carrying out some really cutting edge trials that I'm really excited about. The first is we're trying to reset the immune system in patients just diagnosed with diabetes. It's called an immune reset trial and we're using patients own stem cells from the bone marrow to do that with a special drug called Plerixifor. The early results of that look promising but it's still too early to say whether that will be a definitive therapy but a very important bold step for patients just know, diagnosed with diabetes. With the Edmonton Protocol, we've been carrying out islet cell transplants here at the University of Alberta for almost 20 years, and even some of the very early patients still have excellent function. In fact, one or two of the very first patients we did are still insulin-free almost 20 years later. The islet transplant provides proof of concept that if we replace cells that are damaged in diabetes, we can effectively cure this disease. However, today, patients require powerful anti-rejection drugs to prevent rejection. So one of our big trials in our next bold step is to try to reduce the amount of anti-rejection drugs needed and perhaps eliminate them altogether uh, with a process called immune tolerance. And for that we're using a special form of cell, patients' own cells, and these are called uh, regulatory T cells that are master regulators of the immune system, that T regs. Uh, we take basically patients' cells from the bloodstream, we send them to San Francisco where we're uh, collaborating with Jeff Bluestone and Quizzy Tang, two world experts in Treg immunotherapies. And the patient's own cells are expanded in a dish and sent back to Edmonton after three or four weeks. And then we infuse them back into the patients. We're just about to start that trial and it's the first in the world type of trial with Tregs in islet cell transplant. If we're able to make progress with the Tregs in islet transplant, there's no reason why we can't apply the same kind of therapies in the future to our next bold step which is our transplantation of human embryonic stem cells that make human insulin. We've been working with a company called Viasite in San Diego for the last almost 19 years now. And this company has a cell that is derived from a human embryonic stem cell that makes human insulin in a regulated perfect way. We've been able to treat countless thousands of mice with uh, these stem cells and effectively cure mice with uh, diabetes over many years now. In fact, we've been able to treat and, and, and effectively eliminate diabetes from the mice for the entire lifespan of the mice in our most recent studies we're about to publish in the journal Diabetes. So we're very excited about that kind of approach and we've carried out, immune, uh, uh, we've carried out clinical trials with Viasites since 2014 here. Uh, we've shown these cells to be very safe uh, to do, begin to do the process, same process in patients as they're doing in mice uh, and begin to make human insulin and we're now in the process of stepping up those trials to try to put more cells into patients to see if we can get a measurable effect uh, in, in terms of uh, diabetes control and there's, there's going to be many iterative steps to try to get to the next process. Currently we're at what's called encapsulating those cells in a device, a macro encapsulation device called Encaptra and that's designed to prevent cell-to-cell -cell contact and prevent immune activation while protecting the cells. And we're making considerable progress with Viasite in these trials and we just have to wait now and carry on and do the next patients. In fact, we're doing the next ones next week. So I'm very excited about that. Our ultimate next step, which is one we're working now in the lab on, not in patients yet, but in, but in the test tube, is trying to use personalized medicine uh, to treat a uh, patient's own diabetes and that involves a process called inducible pluripotential stem cells or IPS technology. 
Here we take a, a, a blood a cell or a, a cell from the lining of the cheek or from the skin and we expand the patient's own cells and turn them back in time using what, what are called the Yamanaka factors and we can basically dial these cells back to become like they were the embryonic stem cells. Then we can wind them forward again and turn them into patient's own insulin producing cells. We're very excited about that step. It's going to be a big challenge to get there, but if we do that, we'll have entirely compatible uh, cells that won't be rejected by the patient's own immune system. We may have to edit those cells with um, a process called CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to allow them to be completely compatible and to try to overcome the autoimmune process and also overcome some of the immune defects and, and gene, gene defects that might exist in patients with pre-existing diabetes. So those are our four bold next steps. We're doing this in partnership with DRIFCAN as well as a number of other funding organizations. We're trying to move the needle to get to the point where we have a really robust treatment and potential cure for diabetes ahead. There's nowhere else in the world where all of this activity is happening at once in Edmonton and I'm really thrilled to be part of that process. Thank you.